Hey everyone, it's Miss Patrick. Welcome back to math. Today we're going to keep exploring fractions and we're going to do that using the fraction bars you made last week. So you might want to take a second, go ahead and get out your fraction bars. You can use the kind that are all together or even better, you can do closer to what I'm going to be doing today with your set that has been cut up. Okay, so I'm going to be using fraction bars just like you, except I'm going to be using these plasticky ones because I kind of like them with them being magnetic. They stick to my board and they're colorful, which should help you see them, but they're going to work the exact same way as yours. So yours are just as good. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. If you look at this that I have here, hopefully you see this is just the number one. This is one hole. It's the same thing as the one hole you made on your fraction bar. Okay. It just means this is what I'm using to show how big the number one is. And so it's as simple as that. Now we know we can write this number one as a fraction by saying a numerator and denominator. So if we think about numerator being how many pieces we have, how many pieces do we have? Well, we have one piece. And our denominator, one piece of what? Well, it's a whole. So I have one whole. So the number one written as a whole number and the number one whole written as a fraction are actually equivalent. It means they're the same. They mean the same exact thing. They have the same value. So they're kind of interchangeable. Today we're going to focus on writing these whole numbers as fractions and that's actually our learning target today. I can write whole numbers as fractions. And so I think you're going to enjoy doing this and you're going to learn that your whole life you've been working with fractions. You just didn't know it. So, Let's dig in. Um, I showed you one hole and I'm going to leave the fraction up there, but what happens if I actually have another one? What happens if I have two of them? Well, this is one hole and this one is one hole. We're going to ask ourselves these questions. How many pieces do we have? We have two pieces, two pieces of what holes. So we have two holes and this is the same as one, two, just like how one plus one is two. One hole plus one hole equals two holes. Easy, right? It's the same as the number two. The whole number and the fraction are the same. They're equal. Okay. Well, what do you think happens if I actually have another one? Well, one hole plus one hole plus one hole. Well, just like how when you count one, two, three, you're going to count it the same way. How many pieces do you have? One, two, three. Three pieces of what? Of a hole. We have three whole pieces. So we have three holes. Notice my denominator whole is staying the same because every single one of these are holes, but the number of holes that I have is changing. So my numerator is changing. My number that tells me how many I have or how many I'm counting is going to change, but the size of my pieces has stayed the same. So I have three holes. It's the same as the number three. If I had four holes, I would have four over one, four holes. It'd be the same as the number four. I could say five holes, six holes, seven holes. I could have 100 of these bars and it would be 100 holes. And now you can write that as a fraction. So practice, go find some things that are whole numbers. Maybe you have three whole pizzas and write it like this, three holes. And you just wrote whole numbers as fractions. Great job. Now, this isn't the only way to do this. There's another way that I think is going to come really easy to you. Um, I'm actually going to move two of my holes off here and we're just going to look at one and I'm going to put a fraction up here. So I'm going to put one third up. Now let's think about what we know about one third. We know our numerator tells us how many pieces we're counting. So how many pieces am I counting here? I'm counting one. One of what? One third. Well, we know that third means that we need three pieces to make a whole. So if I put three one third pieces up there, well, 
that's how many I need to make one hole. Can you see how my orange pieces, my three orange pieces make the same size as my one red? Well, if you do it with your fraction bars, you'll see that three thirds, three one third pieces come together to make the same size as one hole, which is really why we made those fraction bars. So that's the meaning of the word third. Well, let's think about what this really means. If I have one third piece, another third piece, and one more one third piece, what we really have is one, two, three thirds. And we would write that just like this, three thirds. Well, let's talk about what this number here, this fraction really means. What is it the same as? One whole. So three thirds is the same, which I can write the equal sign to mean the same. Three thirds is the same as one whole, which we also learned a few minutes ago we could write like this. Wow, so there's lots of ways we could write one whole. Could write one whole or three thirds. It's the same. If I say you can have one whole candy bar or you can have three thirds of a candy bar, well, it doesn't really matter which one you choose because it's the same. They're equivalent. Well, guess what? It doesn't just end there. What if we tried it with something other than thirds? So I'm gonna leave my hole up so that you can still see it. But now I'm gonna try it with eights. Now think about what is the meaning of one eighth? Well, it means I have one piece and I need eight of them to make a hole. Well, if you need eight pieces to make a hole, how many pieces will you have when you get to a hole? Eight, right? Let's double check that. Eight eighths. How many eighths did we need to make one hole? We needed eight eighths. And it's the same as one hole, which we just said was the same as three thirds. And if you think about it, it makes a ton of sense, right? The denominator tells us they're called eighths. Eighths means we need eight of them to make a hole. So eight eighths is the same as one whole. So using that logic, how many halves equals one whole? Two halves equals one whole. Six sixths equals one whole, which would look like this. Six sixths equals one whole. One hundred one hundredths equals one whole. You could use it with any denominator. Pick your favorite number, 15 maybe. 15 fifteenths equals a whole. If you have the number of pieces you need to make one whole, well, you have one whole. So here we have eight eighths is the same as one whole. And I can even show this on a number line. I'm actually gonna make a number line right underneath this model here. I'm going to start my zero where I have zero pieces. I'm going to end my one hole where this one hole ends and I'm actually going to draw a partition underneath every one eighth piece. So I could say zero eighths just like we did last week. One eight eighths. I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine that I actually found another one of these. What does that mean? Do I have ninths now? We know there were eight pieces and now there's nine pieces, but do the nine pieces make one whole? No, it's still eight pieces to make one whole. So this right here, this number, is still eight eighths. But now I don't have just eight eighths. How many eighths do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I put another eighth on the end, I have nine eighths. And you can see that's greater than one whole because eight eighths is the same as one whole. And you can see nine eighths 
is more. So if I added another eighth, I would have 10 eighths and 11 eighths, 12 eighths, and so on and so on and so on, which we might practice in a little bit. But I just want to make sure that you guys are clear that, you know, last week all of our number lines went from zero to one whole. That was because we were just learning how to put fractions on number lines. But now that you guys are so good at that, I want to make sure that I clarify with you that numbers and fractions don't end at one. They keep going. And so I can continue counting eighths or any fraction onward. And we're going to continue doing that a little bit today. This time we're going to back it up and make it a little bit easier and use halves. If I want to use halves, how many halves do I need to make a whole? Two. You guys have got that down. You guys are really good at halves. So I can show two halves like this. One half plus one half equals two halves, which we said is the same as one whole. Easy, right? But what if I have three halves? Well, we write it just the same. How many pieces do I have? One, two, three. I have three pieces of what? Well, they're still called halves because even though I have three of them, I only need two of them to make one whole. So it's three halves is what I have here. And you can see this is bigger than one whole. If I said you can have three halves of a candy bar or one whole candy bar, well, hopefully you know that three halves is actually more. So. Good luck, hope you choose three halves in that dilemma. But do you think it stops here? Do you think I could add even more halves? You're right, I can. So let's look and see what happens if I do this. If I add another half, well, now I don't have one, two, three halves, I have four. But do I have four fourths? No, just because there's four pieces doesn't mean I need four to make a whole. I still, my whole the size has not changed. I still only need two pieces to make a whole. So I still have halves, but I have four halves. And if you think about it, if two pieces make one whole and four is made out of two sets of two, then maybe we actually have two holes. Do you see how they're the same? So four halves is the same as two holes, which like we said is the same as the number two, the whole number, two, one, two. We have one, two. Pretty cool, right? So now hopefully what you're seeing is we can make an abundance of whole numbers out of fractions. We actually have an infinite number of whole numbers we can make out of fractions all different ways. So let's just do a couple more. All right, before I even put up a sixth, I hope you can tell me how many sixths I need to make a whole. Six. So let's get six sixths. There we have it, six sixths. Six one-sixth pieces, right? So I can say I have six one-sixth pieces, or I could show it by saying, one six plus one six plus one six, so on, six times. And I'm gonna have how many sixths? Six sixths. Now, you see I kept two holes here. Well, if I wanna have another hole, that means, and I wanna do it with six, that means I need six more six. All right, let's get that up. You can see that again, six six is the same size as one hole. And I can write this set as six sixths. Well, if we have six sixths here, it's the same as one hole, and six sixths here is the same as one hole, all together I have six and 12. Actually, if we put our six sixths and our six six together, we have 12 sixths. How many pieces do we have? 12. 12 of what? Sixths. So we have 12 sixths. And again, it's the same as two holes. So use your fraction bars to explore this today. I want you thinking about these things, exploring. Try to make all different sorts of fractions that you can come up with. And remember to take a picture and send it in to your teacher or and or to this email address because that is how you can have your picture 
featured in my next video. All right, best of luck. I'll see you soon. Bye.